This is the fourth video now on diagnosing battery or alternator symptoms. Uh, although in this one, I'm going to go beyond the circuit of the battery and the alternator and talk about searching for battery drain causes. So if you've checked your battery and alternator and connections, as I've overviewed in the previous three videos, and your battery is somehow going flat, but you know that there's nothing wrong with it, uh, then here's how to investigate for things that might be draining it. The very first thing I suggest you do is a very simple test to check if your alternator is not causing problems. Now you can disconnect the cables at the alternator, uh, but the easiest way is to check for AC current at the battery. So what you want to do with the engine running, uh, so the alternator is running, is set your uh, multimeter to look for AC voltage and then put your probes across the battery terminals as you normally would. You have to make sure it's on AC not DC mode otherwise of course you'll just measure the 12 volts. Um, so as you see here you should get zero. Anything other than zero and the rectifier on the alternator has a problem and that's something that could be draining the battery even when the system's off. So with that ruled out, the next thing to do is to look for current draws elsewhere in the car. Now to do these tests, you need to make sure that the car is completely asleep, electronically speaking, which can be a challenge with modern vehicles. Uh, first thing you need to do is fool the car into thinking it's locked uh, with all the doors shut uh, while keeping one actually open so that you can get into the car. Um, some cars have sensors as part of the door latch. Uh, so that you can you can throw the latch manually uh, with the door open. Uh, but other cars have a switch on the door frame uh, like this one. So what you need to do is work out a way of holding that switch on so the car believes that the door is closed against it. Uh, you also want to make sure that the boot or trunk is properly shut so that its light is off. Uh, this works well and on this Ford you can test this by double locking the car using the remote and the uh, indicators here will only flash when all five doors are in fact shut and the security system thinks that uh, everything is all locked up. And then you just want to uh, have a check inside, uh, make sure that the courtesy lights have gone off, uh, check nothing's in the cigarette lights, uh, lighter socket, uh, remove this phone charger, for example. Uh, the glove box light is off, everything off. And the key wants to be out of the ignition also. Um, on some modern cars, uh, especially those with keyless entry, you might even need to go hide the key somewhere out of range of the car uh, just to stop it from waking itself up and placing a drawer on the battery that we want to avoid measuring. Um, and then you need to wait until the car is properly asleep. That might take a while and it really depends on the car. Uh, this thing kicks in its power save relay after I believe 20 minutes. Uh, so at any time after that, any drain we catch, will uh, we will know that it's you know really actually a problem. What you want to do next, as the first and shall we say coarsest of tests, is insert your digital multimeter into the battery circuit to measure the amperage. So first, configure your multimeter so that its highest value fuse is being used. That's the 10 amp one in this case. Now you need to do this as the current could exceed the limit of the lower one and you would just end up blowing it. And to start with, I'm just going to switch on the side lights to deliberately draw a relatively large amount of current and we'll see what that looks like. Then you need to disconnect the battery negative terminal and you might think that this will kill the car's keep alive memory, you know, the stereo memory, things like that, and maybe also wake the car up while it's uh, when it's reconnected. However, if you're careful, there's no reason you can't keep continuity uh, even while you insert the multimeter. Uh, what you need to do is attach one probe to the negative terminal fitting like this. Uh, using crocodile clip probes is very convenient for this sort of thing, by the way. And then use something like a cable from a jump starter kit for the other probe. And then you can carefully lift the terminal fitting off the battery terminal, but keeping it in electrical contacts all the time. And if you're very careful, you can get both sides of the multimeter attached uh, before you actually separate the fitting and battery. 
Um, and as you can see here, they're now separated, although I've left them quite close together. They are uh, electrically apart from each other. Um, but the side lights are still working okay, so um, current is obviously flowing through the multimeter, and um, we never lost continuity uh, during this process. So as to the amount of that current, switch your multimeter to the high fuse amp setting, and as you can see, I'm measuring over 2 amps. Now, what you would want to see here is something a lot closer to zero. Of course, I'm just uh, measuring those 2 amps as a demonstration. Uh, in fact, the measurement, if you have any drain, is it's likely to be in milliamps, and to measure accurately at that range, you're going to want the multimeter to be down on the milliamp setting, uh, which means using the lower value fuse on most multimeters. Uh, so on this thing, that mode has a max of 600 milliamps. So I basically just wanted to check here that I can actually use that without blowing it. Now again, not to break continuity, you can just pull, uh, put the terminal fitting back in place before disconnecting any multimeter leads, as doing so will obviously break the circuit. And then separate the terminal again and uh, put the multimeter into milliamp mode. So this measurement you see here of over 300 milliamps is quite high. Uh, it's actually because I've woken the car here, so some things are running that would normally be off. Now that's why I went through that elaborate sequence before to trick the car into sleeping. And the magic number is really uh, about 50 milliamps. Anything below that and you're probably okay. Uh, anything above and you have quite a bit of drain going on. So if you now know at this point that you do have some drain, then you need to pinpoint which circuit it's active on. So to do that, you want to get access to the fuse boxes, both the engine bay one and also the interior one. In this car, the interior one is behind the glove box. So now you know why that door needed to stay open. And what I'll do here is, uh, again, to demonstrate, I'll uh, turn on one of the courtesy lights. And you can see the current go up accordingly on the ammeter as I do that. And uh, then you would need to go through and start pulling fuses until you see that current draw drop. So you'll need a uh, diagram of your fuses, of course. You can look them up online, maybe, or maybe they're in your user manual. Uh, in my case, uh, I know which one it is. So when I pull this fuse, not only does the light go out, but the current drops on the ammeter. So if you're watching that ammeter and doing this one fuse at a time, then that would uh, identify the circuit. Now, that is the basic way to do this. It works on all fuse types and on all cars, uh, but it is a little basic, shall we say, and removing fuses uh, can, especially on modern cars, have sort of second order consequences. Uh, for example, you might wake the car up inadvertently and then start measuring current drops that aren't actually a problem. Um, so a smarter way to do this nowadays is to back probe the fuses themselves uh, while they're still inserted and measure a voltage drop across them because any current flow through the fuse actually does result in a minor amount of voltage drop that can be picked up and measured. So to do that, you'll need to switch your multimeter probes uh, back to their normal configuration for uh, voltage and you'll also want sharp probe ends. Now this only works if the fuses have their terminals exposed uh, like these. And all you're doing is measuring the voltage across the fuse as shown. Now basically it should be zero. Any voltage you pick up is going to be because of some current flowing through that circuit. So again, you just need to work your way across all the fuses until you get something that looks dodgy. Now here's my demonstration case uh, in the interior fuse box again. See this one is measuring about 1.1 millivolt. Now that is enough to flag this circuit and this fuse turns out to be the cigarette lighter socket uh, which is because I had my phone still plugged in and charging. Again, just as a demonstration. Now with the voltage measurement, uh, once you have it, the other advantage to this technique is that you can actually deduce what the current flow is specifically through that circuit. Uh, because the fuse is a standard thing with constant known characteristics. Now there are charts available that will let you look this up. So if you just search online for uh, fuse voltage drop chart, then you'll find something useful. 
uh, you need to know the type of fuse that you're looking at, uh, mini in this case, and also the rating. So that one that I was measuring is a blue 15 amp fuse. So I can go across the 1.1 um, millivolt row until I find that. And then I know that I was getting about uh, 240 milliamps through that circuit. So obviously this is a, a superior measurement to doing it at the battery because it relates to this specific circuit and it isn't just a, a sum total of the entire car's electrical draw. Right, so once you've identified the circuit, it might become obvious what's going on, uh, or you might need to start getting messy, so to speak. Either way, the point of this video and this whole series really was to just help you get oriented in the right direction and to not waste time or money on things that are, you know, actually okay, as um, battery or alternator problems can be quite tricky. So I hope it was all helpful. Good luck and have fun.